in and in, you're all set, you've got your drams there. In fact, go and put the kettle on. Right. You ready? Have a quick coffee before Aye. the biscuit. Maybe get a wee the, chocolate biscuit. Get, no, no, that'll, that'll damage your palate. Oh, you've sure. just had four. <laughs> four chocolate biscuits. My, my black coffee now. Oh, right, okay. right for the, the biscuit. Some right. great biscuits, so we'll get to that. Right. We'll see you soon, folks. You're Absolutely. on the right channel. Catch up with you soon. Ping us some questions if you want.
So, hi. So, Neil. Oh, oh, what are you doing here? You're not meant to be on it this time. Gregor, we've still got more time until these guys get off. Get them off.
You are exactly in the middle of the screen. Am I in that one there? Yeah, you will be in a second. Just wait. <laughs> Can you, anybody hear me? We're not far away. We're going to sing to you today. <laughs> That's kind of be life. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, See you later, folks. Not you, lot. You will be in for a good show tonight. Right, team, be good. Right, there we go. We're trying something out so we can phone somebody later on. Anyway, that's why we're doing it. So if you fancy us phoning you, give us a shout. We can give you a wee tinkle. Is that right, Gregor? Tanty Peel, what do you reckon? High tech? Oh, it's far too high tech for me. Like, what's that? Well, it didn't get too close. Neil used to use a tin can and a piece of string. <laughs> don't do something. So. <laughs> uh, uh, here we go. Hopefully, you are all enjoying the warm weather. Let's uh, clear the head right, chef there. Right, right, right. Right. Right.
Herr Schwimm, da haben Sie ja auch den Füßen. Was ist? You are live. Hey, hey, we're live! How's everybody tonight? Been out in the garden getting sunburnt? Mm, bit hot out there, Tati Peel. That's it, solar panel for a sex machine here with TP, <laughs> the old Tati Peel. Eh, been a lovely day out there, hasn't it? Absolutely great. I took a half day today, Graham. Oh, good on you. What did you do? Anything that's special? Sat in the garden. Quite right. Aye. Absolutely. Thing this afternoon. Well, some of us were working for uh, for a living, but anyway, that's fine. Of course, you're of hopes he still works, but anyway, that's fine. <laughs> Welcome to the 1775 Whiskey Passport live event here at the Market Grill with Tati Peel and Evening. Gregor. Hi there. Gregor, the great technician. Let us see your face. Come on, show everybody what he looks like. This is what Gregor looks like, just in case you're, you're panicking. There you go. It's not like the stig on the, uh, the what do you call it, top gear. That's it. So, anyway, that's the crew. And, of course, I'm the dog's body, Graham Blakey. So, welcome. Now, we've got an action-packed show tonight, Neil. Have we? I hope so. You've not told me what's happening tonight. I don't three whiskeys. Right. Well, tell me about those whiskeys. Yeah, right. uh, we've got a Glenn Rothis. Whiskey Makers uh, Cut to the number one. Uh, then we're going to go into a Glen Dronach uh, Batch 8, which I've, uh, I've really never heard of until we found it online. And uh, to finish off with a Kaulila Moch, which is a, an Isla Whiskey, but it's really a nice introduction to single malt uh, Isla Whiskies. Nice and light, nice and delicate. Mm -hmm. we, we drop Pete in it, and it's a nice introduction. <clears throat> so if you're a nice introduction if you want to get yourself into Isla Very Whiskies. Very good. So, nice wee starter. Um, to get warmed up, up. Yep. let's just see who we've got dialing in here. Gregor, I might need your help. I can see people's. I see uh, somebody shouting green apples. I can see <laughs> somebody get out the bath there. <laughs> Evening, gents. Mr. Brown, Stephen Montgomery. Hello, have you got anybody in? Oh, Jamie Dalrymple's pumping it up oh, there. Jamie. You got your whiskey, Jamie? McManus, yeah. evening all. That's it. And as everything goes on, Caroline Hall, Raymond Hall, Ian Smith from the centre of the universe, Intranet. Big belt of that's it, absolutely. that's it. Now, I'm going to ask you all a question just because we want a little bit <coughs> of uh, interaction here. If you were to have a whiskey for breakfast, breakfast, what whiskey would you have? And I'm going to ask it to you in a wee second there, Tatty Peel. So just have a wee thought. But anyway, before we uh, we get rock and rolling, just a little bit about the uh, sensible, responsible drinking. Remember, it's a 50 mil measure, folks. You've got don't guzzle it. Take your time, share it, ideally a little bit in the glass, enjoy it with our company, and then later on go back and uh, have a little finish bit more. Off. Finish, it off, finish it off. And not on a winner, so absolutely. But anyway, what else have you been up to this week? Just the usual, just working away, keep my head down, uh -huh. just uh, yeah, enjoying what the season uh, quite. What about some packaging for the, the Whiskey Passport? Anything happening on that front? Yes, yes, we're all having our own packaging, hopefully within the next four weeks. Uh, we've got a printer on the go, getting all cut out, so we right. should have our own package, nice, set the bottles into it. So yep. that should happen, I would hope, by the end of June. Yeah, yeah, yeah well done, I because there's a lot of work that goes into this, it's not <coughs> just an instant one box we do our best with what we've got doesn't always work but hey boy <laughs> scout be prepared and there we go so uh, nanu nanu gregor boy, how's your week been very good very good quite yeah. busy uh -huh. that's what we eat absolutely and he's been working hard on getting us on the different platforms we're just on the uh, youtube and facebook at the moment is that right yes facebook and youtube we are having problems getting it direct on the website um i okay is that right? That's yeah, but that's nothing to do with us. That's Facebook's bits and bobs. But anyway, and of course, I've had a busy week doing our bits for charity, yeah, yeah. Uh, out to the zoo, bits and bobs, soup sandwiches for the community. Was there one way ticket to the zoo? No, 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 no. no. You're having a giraffe. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. So we've got the three whiskies in store for tonight. Anybody else? Who else? Have Nicola Cunningham, Gordon Sayers. Nicola. Can you give me a wave if you can? Give me a wee wave. And we've got a hello from the world there. <coughs> Evening, lads. Pork chops there. Gordon Brown's tuned in from Pilton. Jamie Thorne. Oh, the crowd. Gordon, he's all sober. The crowd's all here. Gordon was on the, the whiskey this afternoon. Oh. In the back garden, so yeah. yeah. I, is that who was running about with the, with the anyway, mankini on? Anyway, you asked about the breakfast whiskey. Yes. I would have a Glenkinchy 12 year old because we're not thinking Glenkinchy, we used to refer to it as nice and light and delicate in the bottom left hand corner of the, the flavour map. And we used to always refer to it as the breakfast whiskey. Oh, there you go. And believe it or not, this is true. I was reading a book earlier in this week on whiskey, and the word in the 18th century of drinking whiskey before breakfast was called skulking. 
Ooh. a skalk, S-K-A-L-K, is a dram before breakfast. So Ooh. that's interesting you brought that up there. There you go. See, yeah. maybe I knew that, and maybe that was asking you. No, you anyway, didn't. could have never told you. Ah, uh, but I might have known it anyway. <laughs> anyway, you guys, tell me what your breakfast whiskey would be. That would be good. And how's your whiskey diet coming along? I heard it's you've good. lost three days already. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I had to work for the week there with Susan Innes and, and Martin's... Uh, 30 year old tomato and to uh -huh. give, give them some notes for that so I had to break tradition and have a wee drama on I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday night just to, to let them know some some so, uh, flavour um, notes and such things it was fantastic by the what way was the, what was the whiskey again for everybody it watching in tomato and 30 year old single cask it, uh, Susan won a raffle in 1989 yeah she's that old before I was born <laughs> she's that old uh, for a pound ticket and I'll not tell you much it was worth at the end of the 30 years but it's a fantastic whiskey uh, in fact, I've got a wee drop for you tonight, Graham, so you can try it later on. Must be so, Christmas. Kind enough, kind enough to give me some extra stuff there. last night on delivery. So. There we go. Well done. We're looking forward to that. Thanks very much, Neil. Well, anyway, I think everybody's getting a wee drew there. Gary McFarland's in there. He said hello, you know, Gary. Gary's Gary still awake. Ah, he's, still, oh, he's still awake. And uh, Brian Johnston, of course, a good compadre there. Remember, your breakfast whiskey, folks, what would you have? What would you have? Right, so remember last week we talked about the uh, WBAS, which was the whiskey bottle arriving system. Now, shall we try it again this week, okay, Neil? If we'll he claps his hands, let's see if he has any luck. Right, come on, Neil, clap your hands. Is any hand come in? No, right, I've got a new system. I've got a new one. Where is it? We've got the bell. We've well, got the whiskey bell. The bell right, fun. so that's... Oh, it's very loud. Oh, neat. Oh, you've got a, bloody... you've got a bottle of wine. Oh, that's no good. I'll share the vlog. I'll take that. You'll take that, that anyway, well, okay. well, Always a policeman there anyway. Say no more. Right, shall we give it a good day? Right. Right, let's see what's happening. Oh, look at this. Whack. No expense yeah. spared. No expense spared. It's just like NASA, isn't it? Really, just the technology. It's but at least we're working tonight. Yes, we're working I'm get up on guys, right? I'm okay, never launch. <laughs> it's supposed to launch tomorrow, but I see Florida's got uh, Have you got more another storms? storm tonight or today anyway, yeah. So, folks, the first uh, whiskey that we've got to try today, it's a wee bit heavier than what we'd normally recommend for the, the first one. Uh, as you know, I'll go to the more light and delicate, but my, my favourite whiskies are, are, are sherry matured. So, nice dark sherry matured Glenrothes. Uh, Glenrothes is not from the town of Glenrothes. It uh, is in Rothes in Speyside, and it's been about since uh, 1879. In fact, there's a story behind the, the Glenrothes distillery. It's now owned by Edrington Group, and I, I think it only had a, it, I think it's only about 10, 12 years it's really been a, a single malt on the marketplace. It was really the filler for Famous Gouts, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Glen Rothes are here. But the, the very first uh, spirit was cut, apparently, on the 28th of December, 1879, uh, which was the same day as the, the, the Tay Bridge disaster. Oh. And they reckon that was a bad omen. And, and since then, in oh. the 19th century, they had about three explosions and God knows how many fires in there and actually put it down to making the first spirit on the 28th of we're December. We're going to go. We're going to go. go. Aye, aye, aye. That's right. aye. So it's the Glenroth. This, this is the Whiskey Maker's Cut. I think they have about, uh, it's a Solero uh, range. At the, they have about four or five, I think, in that range. It used to be an age statement, but as I've said before, a lot of them are doing away with age uh -huh. statement now. So this is fantastic, and you'll remember it well, Grandpa. We're down at the Fisky Show. That's in September, it. If you can remember that late in of the day. Of course, absolutely. The jet lag, the jet lag had set in at that point. Well, it was a four o'clock in the morning start. Yes, and so uh, it's forty-eight percent alcohol by volume. So again, a wee bit stronger than we'd normal have for the, the first dram of the day. But hey, it's Friday night. Oh, days so let's kick on from there. So again, we'll have a look at the. The, the, the whiskey, it's a nice dark colour, you saw mm. it in the bottle there hopefully, and you'll see it in your glass as you're, you're having a look. It's uh, nice and dark, so it's sherry matured, I'm not quite sure what sherry it is. I'm sure they, they, they get it from uh, Jerez uh, in uh, Spain, Spain. Well, so it'll be an Oloroso or something like that, uh, sherry cask. Look at the legs on the, the That's glass. my favourite bit, looking look, at, look the, at legs. the legs. Look at the legs, okay, I believe you. <laughs> uh, it's a bit heavier, as I say, it's, it's not as light and delicate we would normally take for the first one, but I am very much into my share of matured whiskies, so a wee bit on the heavier side. Uh, we've got the, the flavour marks here with the, with the tasting notes, mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, hopefully next week we'll be stopping sending out the, the, the flavour notes because as people know, we're trying to become uh, economically, not economically, environmentally friendly, friendly, yeah. environment friendly, so we've got to stop printing them and send them with you. They'll be available to download on our website mm -hmm. when you place your order 
or if you're not placing an order, you can still go onto the website and download them uh, from there, uh, and we can do that. We'll stick it on the Facebook page as well, so you can do download yeah, yeah. Them, so, the JPEG or PDF. Or every little bit. Every and, little bit helps. So uh, get your squares. Uh, once we've had a nose, have a wee taste of this. Want to see where you want to stick this in. It's fairly obvious now if you have been doing it. Nobody sent them in where they are, uh, but uh, a wee bit of clue. And you have a nose that it's no smoking, mm. but as it stands just now, it's yeah. rich, it's a pretty it's very rich, yeah, heavy legs, slow legs there, which gives you something the rich side. We have a clue, take it to your nose, and absolutely no smoking that at all. Yeah, it's... right away, it's the honey vanilla hitchy, absolutely. And the oak, just the wood from the sherry cast. Mm -hmm. You always get when it's sherry matured, you always get that lovely, fresh wooden, and I think it's a nice, fresh wooden. Dried fruits, currants, raisins come you in. You like your sherry cask. Yeah. Uh, and it's almost like, oh, I don't know what to say, but it's probably stupid shoe polish. Not shoe oh, polish, shoe but polish. if you just polish your shoes, you know, oh, dubbing the old days of your football boots with the, 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 the oh, right, dubbing yeah. on your football boots. Leathery, sort of. Oh, I get the leather. Uh, just coming through there, just uh, actually quite nice. It's a very, very pleasant whisky. Um, as I say, the, the nose on the, the, the sherry matured is absolutely fantastic you've got that richness of the honey there is a wee bit of vanilla still there uh, it, it doesn't tell you how long it's been the sherry the longer it's in the sherry the longer it's in the sherry the less vanilla is there occasionally you get it but there's certainly lots of honey nice and rich dried fruits mm. orange mm. It's almost like a marmalade, really thick, sort of orange rind, yeah, yeah. Orange, orange skin, skin of coming it. through from there. The orange, yeah, very pleasant on the nose. I say, it is, aye. third time today, it's a bit heavy for an opening one, but a fantastic whisky. Oh well, hey. have a wee taste of it in the palate. Cherry blossom, and Neil McIver. Mmm, cherry blossom, Neil. Yeah, that's uh... oh wow. Whoa. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're tingling, they're tingling, I can yeah, feel it, them. It, it's almost like cremola foam, if you remember cremola foam, where it just hit your mouth and just opens up, it's like an explosion in your mouth there. Medium finish, still there, the, the marmalade, the orange, the, a bit spicy, hazelnuts. Ooh. Oh, uh, the wood, the oak is coming yeah. through now, but uh, again the fruit, the orange, uh, I'm, I'm getting a lot of the orange coming, it's right, heavy, heavy dark fruit. The, the, the dried fruit's coming through now, the raisins come. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would have said it was a medium finish, but it's actually quite a long finish. Uh, there is a good bit kicking in there. I'm, I'm looking forward to some water on it. try a bit of water. I think yeah. it'll be quite nice of water. Sorry, I should hold my glass up. If anybody can, I don't know if the camera can pick that up from mm -hmm. there. Cut the drops. As I say, with your sherry, you need a bit more whiskey in your glass. So you guys, we are taking 25, 30, even your 50 ml in the glass just now. Hold your glass up, especially if you've got a, a Glen Cairn or a, a similar shape nose and glass, you do see the oil separating more the richer it is, the more sherry it's in it. And it, it just, it's opening the flames. Mm -hmm. it, it just it does it well. Take it back to your nose and you'll find the nose is gone. Actually completely gone in here. A bit of the oak, a bit of the, there's no fruit at all, no orange, mm -hmm. no dried fruits. The leather, the, the, like a shoe polish, I, I say dubbin for those of you a certain vintage. Mm -hmm. Dubbin still there. A snow seal, Coconut. I remember snow seal. Snow seal. Yeah, but very pleasant, very soft. You know, it, it, I think it's at 48 I think it was. Yeah, it? yeah it's 40, right. It's, uh, it's 48 percent yeah. alcohol before. So it's a wee bit stronger, but with a wee touch of water, let's have a try. We've got Jeremy Blackwood just dialed in from the States here as well. Mr. Nickel, Mr. Brown. Mr. Hello. Wow. Spicier. Lot, right, immediately a longer finish. You get the dry fruits coming through now. Um, oh, nutmeg, spices. Cinnamon. But again, the fruit seems to disappear with the water, which is quite unusual. Normally, it sort of softens that a bit. Um, but it's more than spicy, nutty, mm. woody. Okay. But very, very pleasant. Actually, mm. That's a real, real nice straw. It's quite um, it's strong. I'd tell you. Yeah. yeah wouldn't you, have my first one of the you, night, you, but you, yes, yeah, I like yeah. I do like it. As I say, normally we'd start with a lighter one, but as I say, hey, it's Friday. And I do like my sherries. And I'm just trying to get a balance as we go through the weeks and months ahead. Mm -hmm. So we can just get whiskies. It's not readily available yep. in supermarkets, and that. You know, it's an expression. It's a, a distillery you maybe have heard of. You'll know it. So we try to find different expressions uh, just to, to highlight them and just get them out there. Uh, but that's the Glen Rothes right. whiskey makers cut. I think it's a great drop. Um, I used to like it. Uh, I think it's George Ridpath. George will know mm -hmm. me. A lot of the technology is too old. George, I've known all my life from McMurray. 
it was, a, I think, say a few weeks ago, the famous Grouse Rep for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And it was George that introduced this to me uh, yeah, yeah. in the Tyneside in Harrington it's and told me to have a wee taste of it. And the standard, I think, was a 10 year old at the time. Yeah. And it was the uh, 46% ABV at the time. Right. But uh, again, it was a stunning whiskey, absolutely stunning That's, whiskey. Uh, yeah. Pretty unknown as such, it's not a popular whiskey, but it should be a lot more popular than what it actually is because yeah. it's certainly I worth think it. Uh, the name may be Glenrothes because we're in the area, people well, think it's from just over in the kingdom. The kingdom of yeah, a, a Fifer. I'd rather right. be a lifer than a Fifer. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to upset uh, somebody that's watching in just now from <laughs> Fife. But yeah. uh, Neil, just touching on what you were saying there, I think it really is important that. You know, we have a spectrum, different range, a wide range of whiskies. So people would actually try whiskies that you would never normally try. That's what it's all about. Um, some tasty Sorry stuff. Interrupt you. you know what I'm getting now? Fudge. Fudge. <laughs> fudge. <laughs> A, a, a dryness, but like a fudge. Yeah, it's just it's, I, hopefully somebody else can pick that up as well. Is that from that's, the chocolate biscuit you had? Chocolate, the show. Right, that's that's maybe, coffee, chocolate biscuit. Maybe no. what it was. No, it just it was a, a, an aftertaste, almost a, the longer finish than the aftertaste. So yeah, it was, yeah it's it's interesting. interesting. And that's good. Yeah, just somebody had asked me a question earlier on. There's a few people been dialing in that have been liked and shared the program, but they actually don't know too much about it. Basically, we're we're here. You can uh, go into the website. You can order the whiskies. We'll deliver the whiskies to you. It's a 50 mil measure, and then you can come in on the Friday night and you can participate with us. Because I know there was somebody that asked me and said to me, there's a few people that, that have been watching but weren't very clued up. So just say okay. that straight. Yeah, yeah there absolutely. We go. Welcome everybody to come along. Anybody who wants to phone in themselves, give yeah. us a call. That's we'll it. answer the call and we'll, we'll speak to you. you. You have to be live on the air with us. So, uh, we kind of keep it quiet. So it's the questions are, are always welcome. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. We're here this year. What knowledge we do have at Single Malt Whiskey, get it out there, get lesser known brands, lesser known expressions out there, and so people can find them and enjoy uh, them. Absolutely right. What were you going to tell me? I thought you were going to tell me something there. Was I going to tell you something? Ah, was I was going to tell you something? something? I think we'll phone somebody, but we'll wait until we've got into the next whiskey. Oh, I've right, had this idea. Can we phone this week to weekend yet? I'm, not, I'm not going to tell you, okay. and I'm not going to tell any of you, but <laughs> I know somebody's watching. And it's not America, Jeremy. I couldn't have you on here live. So. No, you'll not pay the bill to take phone uh, somebody in the States. Uh, the, the kind of string I know go that far. So. Right, what do we okay. need to do now? Right. Do you, you want to try it? There's no you ring your bell. It never works for me. Look at that. That's how it's done, TP. Uh, Gregors, I'll tell you what, you get yourself over to, to Florida there. We'll get that yeah. up on Saturday. Yeah, get Elon the Musk. There to you can go and help him. <laughs> No problem at all. This is helpful. Glendronic, a distillery, cask strength, 61% alcohol by volume. Oh. Uh, and that's representative of what I do enjoy. Uh, it, you can see the colour in the bottle here. It's really, really dark. It's a, a, a share of matured. And it gives me a clue here. Then you have to think about it. Um, Glendronic Distillery is uh, opened in 1826. It's just outside the town called Huntley. Uh, which is right on the border of uh, Speyside and Highland, but it actually comes under a Highland brand. It's not Speyside. Uh, and when you, when you look at this against Glenrothes, the colour is, is very similar. So I'm expecting potentially to be a similar nose and similar palette on it, but we don't know. Um, Glendronic, uh, if my memory serves me right, was one of the first distilleries in the country to start using uh, sherry casks right, for okay. maturation. There's no, I don't think there's anything in records of, of who was first or whatever, but Glendronic is a, uh, and it's changed hands a few times uh, over the years, and it's actually owned by Ben Reich, is it? Uh, distillery, and there's another one, there's three in the, the, the Is group. it not Brown Foreman, is it not? Picardy, uh, I thought it was. Uh, no, no, uh, Ben, ben Reich, ben uh, yeah, it's uh, independent, I'll say, but there's a third distillery, Neil McIver, you pull it Who knows the answer there, quick <laughs> one, and you come. If you get that in the next minute, you get a free you, dram next week. <laughs> <laughs> An empty drab air, isn't it? <laughs> now, what does this taste of? I wonder, any of these things? Or maybe the, the other ones? Right, here we go. Thanks for that. TP. Slightly darker than, than the, the Glen Rothes. Have we got somebody that works for Glendronic? Is that for your phone tonight? No, no, no. Oh. But I had thought about phoning somebody in the in the industry, but right. I know who I'm going to phone in a second. Just get right. everybody's well, lips wet. Well, we know I mean, and then I'll go in. So have a look at it. It's dark again. It just tells you right away it's share mature. But again, bear in mind, the vast majority of the darker ones are share mature, but they do use port. Uh, Dalmorbia port wood. Balvenie. Jules is doing a, a, a port wood. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not always share, but the vast majority a share mature. So if we take the legs down the glass, it's mm -hmm. slightly heavier, slightly slower, 
than the Glen Rothis. Bear in mind it is six to one point something percent <laughs> ABV. Rocket fuel. Uh, Rock this will six to one exactly. So this will need some water, I'm sure. Looking good. Onto the nose. Thanks very Again, much. You, you can pot it. Oh, right. Oh, right. I'm phoning somebody. Let's see who's who's a, uh, Mike. Mike, who's the architect. <laughs> Let's see if anybody answers. Is somebody going to answer the phone? If this was a prize, you wouldn't win the prize. Oh, Mike. Mike. He's watching them. <laughs> oh, well. Just cut us off. Yeah, Mike. We were trying to speak to you, Mike, because there's something we need to share with everybody. But uh, we wanted to do it on air. But anyway, you carry on. Mike, phone us back. Phone us back, Mike. <laughs> I'm just looking for some of your opinions, Mike, on the, the nose on this uh, Glen Drunner. Because uh, Graham's just whispered to me what, what's happened. But, yes. Uh, it's, uh, quite funny. But, sorry, going back to the nose on it, it the, the nose is really, really sweet, actually. For a 61%, the nose is toffee, caramel, all right way, absolutely. Syrup. Really syrupy. Toffee. We're getting a wee bit coming through. It's like a hint of smoke, but I don't think there's any smoke in it. You're getting a wee bit of vanilla coming through the honey. But I would say it's more honeyish than and vanilla, like a coffee, chocolate coffee, sort of mocha. Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic, and it's not it's not overpowering. It's a six to one percent alcohol by volume. Mm. It's actually smoother than the Glen Rothes. I say I've not tasted it's... this one. I, I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. I, I done a biscuit tasting six months ago for you, Graham, in here. Uh, and it was when you had the beef goulash and the Glendronic oh, 18 year old that was and it up. was like black tea and it was 100% uh, sherry matured mm -hmm. it was never never been in a, a bourbon and it just, oh, here we, it here we go let's see what happens now folks is that Mike? hello hello who's that oh it's uh, Michael I was uh, just trying to call Graham he tried to call me on the show oh right oh hello Michael can everybody hear Michael <laughs> Yeah, can you hear Michael? What, Gregor? No, yeah. Can you hear, hear him? Can you hear him? Anyway, there's too much back noise here. Michael, it's Neil Fox here. I just want to ask. I just want to ask you what your opinion of the nose of the Glendronic Batch Eight is. Right, so did uh, Graham explain what happened? He has, oh, yes. Oh, what, hap what happened? So, um, I, I, I couldn't partake last week. It was my wife's birthday, and of course I had to do the right thing. Yep, yep, and, yep. Um, I was there for that, and uh, so I had last week's whiskeys on, on hold. And I turned up uh, at the America about an hour and a half ago uh, to get some food and uh, pick up the whiskeys for this week as well. So I thought it'll be great. I'm going to have six drums tonight. This will be six fantastic. Six drums? Drove home very fast. There, he's got them right there. Got into the house and realised, shit, you know, I've left these things at the restaurant. And uh, so, <laughs> if nobody drinks them, that'd be great. I'll try them there later. There they go, I'll so put together my own little tasting list whilst you're enjoying yours. And I've got Glenfiddich Fire and Cane, Glenfiddich Project XX, McMira. The uh, Swedish whiskey, oh, nice. and then yeah. for the final dram, I'm going to top it off with a wee 50 ml bottle I've been collecting for ages. It's a 1973 Nocando, oh. and it's part of my little collection. And I thought I'll really love that. I think it's a 10 year old. It's a just a medium Brooks bottle and a nail in the distillery. So I'm looking forward to that one. So that that will make up for being that, a, a total lump today, Mike, and for getting your biscuits for the night. Yeah. So we've got we've got special prizes here for all of you. We've got two packs, unless Mike's quick to get back for this, but they. Uh, Anyway, the moral of the story is don't rock up to the market grill at 7 o'clock at night, get a takeaway and forget your whiskey. Eh, eh, uh. <laughs> two, two, two weeks of professionals in the third week on Monday. Uh, it's Thanks, right, Mike. right, Mike, you take care, bud. We'll be safe. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. There we go. Yeah, folks, then they screw up at any time aye, because aye. you might get abused. Uh, right, there we go. On the nose, toffee, caramel, coffee. syrup, yeah, coffee. Coffee chocolate mocha, is it mocha they call these uh, Italian sort of coffees? Oh, is that the one yeah. with the, uh, yeah, uh, the chocolate through it? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Oh. Spicy. Wow, it's like a chili. <laughs> it's like doing a chili. Oh, that is, that is spicy. A... But for a 61% alcohol Aye. volume, I mean, extremely smooth. Really smooth, but spicy. Honey. Mm hmm. I get a wee bit more of the vanilla coming through now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Vanilla Pepper pods, aye. Pepper, yeah. Golden syrup. Vanilla, vanilla pods. All right. Okay. Aye, I, aye. I wouldn't say that, but vanilla, I've got to have another good taste of that. Is that right? It's a I've got to say, this is one of my favourite whiskies. And uh, for Christmas, I gave Davy Pringle a bottle and also gave one to my dad. That's how generous I am. Long, yeah, yeah the, the spice of the chilli. Mm -hmm. Fruit of the, 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 the orange rind again is coming through, similar to the Glen Rothis. Uh, almost a bit on the, the marmalade side. Mm -hmm. Really, oh, what's it? It's a lovely. And again, a, softening as it, it lingers. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's actually fruitier as it lingers uh, in your mouth. Yeah, it, ah, well, that's, that's fantastic. It's a nice. That I tell you what, fantastic. that's. I think it's only about four pound fifty a, a drop here of a nip, but the grill. I thought you were going to see four fifty a bottle. Uh, <laughs> oh no, it's it's a good value. It's good value, definitely. Uh, a touch of water in it again just changes the nose. It sweetens the nose. It takes the chili out of it. it takes the pepperness out of it. The fruitness comes on. It's it's a bit more citrus, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so a bit more lime. It's not so heavy orange rind. It's, it, it's like an orange. Mm. It's actually very pleasant. Kind of smooth for a touch of water. Now, just uh, a wee question there, Tatty Peel. Uh, mm -hmm. Gordon Brown, our friend that runs about in the Mankini, um, does the glass you uh, you use make a difference to tasting and the legs, etc.? So that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Glen Cairn glass or anything shaped like it is specifically Gordon for the nosing mm -hmm. because you've got the bulbous bit here, which is like you know, if you have a red wine, yeah, you, you put in a bigger glass uh, to, to let it open and let it breathe. So, the idea of is the narrow top actually holds the aromas for you, mm -hmm. so it opens it up as you go into it, into the bulbous part, and as it narrows, it's holding the aromas. So, you're getting aromas tighter on your nose when you, you, you get into there, right, uh, right. And, and it just when you're putting the water in as well, it allows you just to see it in the bulbous part. Normally, I'm just having a wee touch of it, but normally if you've got a 25 mil, put your water in, hold it up, and you'll actually see the oil separating. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's, it's designed to give the maximum it's nose and, and flavour from it. I, it. In the house, I always drink out a, a big size, half pint tumbler, mm -hmm. crystal glass. Yeah. I always think a good single malt should have yeah. proper crystal. Absolutely. Just you, to, you don't get the nose in that. No, part. I think that's a good point. Yeah. It's just his friends drinking out a 10 ounce glass. So I don't <laughs> think you'll get the same uh, you'll get the same effect there. <laughs> so hopefully that helps, Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If, if you're on it all afternoon, you might not remember that with tomorrow, but give me a phone. Or yeah, get yeah. One as if he's still right being now. locked up, he's going <laughs> pokey. Yeah. Stephen Montgomery's loving this down there in Dumfries. Yep. On, on, on the palate now with the water, you get, uh, without the water, went more fruitier, more citrusy for me. Uh, honey, but now it's, it's coming back with the water. It's more chilly, it's more spicy, more peppery. Mm. That, that's, that's quite incredible. I wouldn't say it's better straight. I prefer it yep. uh, with water in it, but it's a different drink. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, even uh, if you enjoyed it, you may probably yeah, yeah. agree with me. I, I, I always like a bit of touch of water, but it actually changes the complexity of it, complexity of it considerably. But when you, you're actually taking it with a touch of water, but wow, that is a fantastic gram, sixty-one percent ABV, well worth good, it. Good uh, for the bang for the yeah, buck, definitely. It, it certainly, it's it's smooth. It's very easy to drink. Mm. Oh, I think. Even yeah. though I picked it out, it's a uh, fantastic choice. Yeah, Glendronic yeah. uh, is quickly turning. I've never been to it. Never oh, been to I, I enjoyed Glendronic. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, it's, it's a, a must visit distillery, I think. Yes. It's a, uh, maybe we'll take the crew yourself. with us if you want to come along one day. The second board meeting after That's it. I felt awkward. Remember, it's on the radar. It just so happens Michael, that was on the phone to us, is an architect and he's been doing work up at Pit Lockery. So I was telling him to line up. He says he's working in a place that's got 20 bedrooms. So okay. I thought that could help our. our uh, our uh, board meeting make it a bit more easier. <laughs> <laughs> so you see them, so we take yeah. seventeen. Aye, aye. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic! That, that's actually really good. You good enjoyed that, that right? Yeah, absolutely. Good. Aye, oh. aye. perfect. Right, is it bell time? Is, is it, it bell time? I'm going to give you a wee shot of the bell just whilst everybody's here. Obviously, we are doing our best to make sure that we're environmentally friendly at the same time, and we've invested in some of this stuff packaging that you'll be getting. Uh, come in and it's actually biodegradable so you can eat it or think maybe. <laughs> anyway it's biodegradable so we're doing the thing for the environment so uh, it's uh, it's good so again stepping forward always doing the right thing you know? good, it's still good. Good. in fact there's bubble gum let me blow a bubble gum. Right, come on ring the bell right yeah got that tp
perfectly worked. It's like being at home, getting the butler, you know. The butler actually <laughs> upstairs, <comes>. downstairs. <laughs> and so I'm doing the Zoom meetings in my office upstairs right now. I always say that. I'm awake, make a cup of tea down to the staff quarters downstairs. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't get anybody who believes me. Cowie Leela, Mock. Cowie Leela is on the, the south side. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Cowie Leela is Gaelic for the, the sound of Isla, which is the sea. Um, oh, are you it's, yeah. sure it's not? The, the Gaelic word for dawn. Mm, I don't know. All right, All right. Okay. who's going to look that no, up, no, folks? No, over to you. No, no, it could be dodgy, but I, I'm not sure. Um, this is a bit lighter. It's it's non-age. Cowley La Standard, I think, is a twelve-year-old, and it's a bit heavy. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, no, no, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's an age. I think it's younger. Uh, than, than the standard 12, it, it's really light, really delicate, mm -hmm. and as I said earlier in the introduction, I, I think it's, if you enjoy your Talisker, there you go, Grandma, if, Thank you. if you enjoy your Talisker, uh, and, and that's getting you a wee bit of an interest uh, in going up a wee bit in, in the, 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 the PPMs um, on the, the, the PT level, I think this is the next level you would go to. As Joanne uh, explained to us last week, for everybody that watch, watched in, I can't remember. Oh my goodness! She took the time to explain what the PPMs were and how. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. That part's been moving enough. Ah, the yeah, phenol. but how they done it? Oh, she, the... she described it as phenol. Optimore. I, I thought it was phenol. Optimore. Optimore. Right. Yeah, yeah, because it, it, it's the, the peat, and it, it, the difference is is not necessarily the, the amount of peat it goes in. It's the time it burns and various different things, which is it, it's fairly technical. But the Cowley is it, fairly right. It's now owned by Diageo, and it was 1846 a distillery it opened. So it's been about a long time, as, as all have. We, we, we try and keep them in the 1800s. Most of them, especially people from America, you know, your country wasn't even born mm -hmm. when we were making biscuit and all that. But again, the biscuit, oh. the, those records go way back to 15th century for sure. And I reckon there's some records, and uh, not much records, but evidence of a, a spirit being made similar to biscuit in, in the 14th century mm -hmm. uh, in Scotland. So it's again, probably all illegal at the time. Yeah. So, but we're having a look at the colour of this. It's very, very pale. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's not first fill bourbon, but it's only bourbon matured. Very light. Uh, and normally you've got a Lafroy, you've got a Bowmore, which are um, bourbon matured only, and that gives you that um, antiseptic sort of nose. But I think this is too young uh, a whiskey. It's really not matured into that level where that antiseptic feeling comes through from it. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the legs, the legs are pretty frequent. It just shows you where you can plot it into the left hand side on the, the flavour map on the light. Mm -hmm. It is you know it's looks delicate, but we don't know you know it's an isla, it's gonna be smoky. So mm -hmm. it's not get set in the delicate side, it's actually go up into the top of the map. And on the nose, the first thing it hits you is the smoke. Repeating this. A wee bit of vanilla in there. Mm. Lemon. A there's a there's a citrus lemon. That's interesting, Martin Innes, if you're, you're, you're in here, I, I've got the lemon sherbet out of the tomatin, which is outside between Aviemore and, and Inverness. And again, it just backs up my theory that you never listen to the regions because I can get lemon sherbet out of this as well, which is really mm -hmm. the light, light colour. Absolutely wonderful. And I've got to say, it's been a, yeah. you know, when you first start yeah. drinking whiskey, you're always put off about the smoky ones. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think with the, the uh, programme, we get you into yeah. trying lighter I, I, ones. I think and, the idea is, uh, this is what's about the amount of people say, I don't like whiskey, I don't like Peter whiskey. I'm not a lover of it. But when you actually do take your time, you have a proper nose of it, you have a little sip of it, you actually try and savour it. it. It helps you understand it. It helps you mm -hmm. appreciate it better. Um, then you can enjoy it uh, fully uh, from there. It's not going to be a rose cup of tea, absolutely not. Uh, I remember 15 years ago, I wanted to like I bought myself a bottle of Laphroaig and forced myself to have a dram every night. And I got to about night 10 and I had to throw it in the sink, but I couldn't take it anymore. But my palate's changed a wee bit and I can drink it, but again, Laphroaig is not my favourite. So we've had a nose there. There's a fly there. I know, there's a, they're doing my heating. I'm just trying to find out what the parts per million is because uh, Mike's asked me. Uh, uh, apart from all, I think it's only about 40, 20, 50. All no, uh, right, okay. Right, I, I'm it's just not, trying it's to. It's not that high. It's no, I'm just trying to see. 20, 30. Uh, just... on, on the palate, again, the smoke hits you. You get about the peat now. Uh, it's coming through. Very buttery. Vanilla, a bit toffee coming through. Yep. Mm. It's actually quite fresh. You know, for a peaty biscuit, you get the lag of villains, which are a sherry matured, and a Beaumore, Lafroy, which are, are really antiseptic and, and, and you get that 
flavour that nose coming through it. This is actually very subtle. It's, I think and it's, it's quite, quite florally, it's quite, quite sweet, sweet the whole way through for yeah, me. Yeah, buttery. It's, it's got a long, for such a, a, a light uh, colour sort of on it, you know, it's got quite a long finish. Uh, it's actually very nice. I've got to be, uh, to be honest, I've tasted it a few times before and it, it, it's very pleasant. That's uh, Dr. Briggs just checked in from the United States just to say hello there. All right. He was participating in cans of tenants last weekend. He felt a little bit of jet lag on the Sunday or the Monday morning, Dr. Labor Briggs, Day weekend. Uh, yes. All right, aye. Hope you enjoyed the tenants, Dr. Briggs. Aye, aye. So we've got a touch of water in it, and, and again, it takes you to notice, for me, the, 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 the peat, the smoke's gone. It, it's, it's vanilla, citrus, mm -hmm. it, it's almost like a non, non peaty whiskey. Yeah, it just yeah, it yeah. lightens it, takes all that away from it. Just, I mean, I'm talking about two, three drops of water. Like maybe 10, 15 mils in this glass or something like that. So I'm going to have a taste in the palate. Is this? Softens the peat. Oh, it's, it's smoky. I, you know what, actually? It, it, it reminds you more of a, a wooden fire where it's gone out, got cold, you put water over it, mm -hmm. and you get that, well, you don't eat it, obviously, but you get that sort of that nasal feeling of it, the, the burnt wood. That, that's what's coming through, but again, buttery. It, right, right, heavy. A uh, hint of smoke, got quite a bit of smoke there, but flowery, florally. Uh, oh, wow, that's mm -hmm. the soft. The, the longer it's in your, your palate, the, the, the longer it's, it's still going, it's still sweetness, going strong, eh? It's sweeter and sweeter uh, as you go through there. I'm going to have another taste of that. Gregor, Nanu, Nanu, come over here. Let's see if I can help me with this. I've came offline. You've got a technical problem. That's it. Are we still online, Gregors? Nanu, nanu. <laughs> right, let me see. Yep. I'm absolutely fantastic. Uh, smoky. It's it's not strong peat. I, I think. Oh, you know that that's born as good as a, a Talisker storm. I, to be I, honest I'm, with you. I enjoy uh, that. That's really nice, and I, I do think. I'm, I'm 30 seconds after having it. I'm still getting the the, the floral, the flowery, the, the the citrus, the lemon, vanilla, butter. And it's it's that's overtaking the, the, the peat and the smoke. Mm -hmm. a really, really pleasant and a, a, as I've said earlier, a really great introduction to Isle of Whiskey. Yeah. That's a Kaulila Moch. So right. there we go, folks. That's it. Excellent. Well I, I think there's been three good choices. Some good choices. We didn't have the full range of three with the light delicate to start mm -hmm. with. It was a, a bit heavy uh, in Glen Office, but uh, completely different, all different. And, I, and when I saw them. Uh, and, and try to have a wee look at the, the different whiskies. I, I wanted to change the regions, but keeping something similar because mm -hmm. I'm, there's a wee bit method in my madness here. Uh, as I keep telling you about the, the the regions, you never just stick by the regions. You always go by the, the flavour map, and uh -huh. well, they're two different regions, but they're very very similar. It's, it, albeit, as I say, Glendronach mm -hmm. Hunt is probably less than five miles uh -huh. out of the space side region, mm -hmm. but it, it's predominantly a Highland yeah. whiskey. So. So, yeah, some it's, all about, yeah. it's all about trying yeah. different stuff. I'm just noticing that Joe the Toe in Philadelphia has joined in with Dr. Briggs. I don't know if any of them have noticed the brandy wine uh, rugby top in the background. It's the team I used to run about with in my, my youth. That was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Anyway, we'll not do that. So, uh, breakfast whiskey, what was it you said you had? Lincoln to 12. And now, uh, the, what do you call them? Um, Glen Morangi, like meaning Glen in the Morangi morning. Oh, that right, was nice, uh, yeah. our compadre. They had not many others shooting in. Is what? Glen Morangi no Don? Don. Is that what that is? No, um, I'm just going by the technical notes that, <laughs> <laughs> that I've researched from the World Wide <laughs> Web. But uh, that's, how okay. I, that's how I've got right, it. Okay. What about a whiskey for lunch? What would you have? Oh, whiskey for lunch? Oh. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, what, you know, if, if you're in Spain or something, they, they have a nice crisp white wine with, oh, with fish or prawns at lunch or something like that. I, I think that would be nice with a fish. Aye, aye. A nice bit of cod, a nice mm -hmm. bit of uh, sea bass or something like that. I, I, I think there's a food pairing. Right. A cow lila would be yeah, yeah, nice yeah. It would, uh, A nice alberini with sort of the, oh, that's a nice wine. Yeah, so, that's and that's then, and I, if you're having a nice uh, holiday at lunch, you, you know, oh, fish for lunch at, at home, I would think. But you no, know, if you're on holiday, uh, yeah, I think that would be a nice substitute for... Yes. So yeah, I would, I would actually go cow lila mock it right off the top of my head. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. that's what it's all about. It's all good. Yeah. So uh, what have we still to do? Tatty beer, tatty beer. My challenge. Here we it's go this time of the show when I surprise the tatty peel with uh, a little dram. And I was searching on the World Wide Web and I came across this. And uh, I'm quite a big fan. 
fan of uh, Glenn Farkless, as, as I was telling you about the 40 year old the other week there. Have a look at this, Neil. Now, some of the guys might know a bit more than me, but this is uh, for the French market, I believe. Have a wee look. There you go, Tatty Peel. See what you're thinking, and then we'll see what's in for that. Yeah. There. It's interesting heritage. I, I don't know what marketplace it goes to, but I know it's uh, it's export market mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never seen the States. Uh, it'll probably be, if it's France, it'll be France, Germany, uh, Austria, Switzerland, mm -hmm. uh, even in uh, Holland, I would suspect. Right, that, right. That's all very much the, a similar all marketplace. All connected. Yeah. Uh, you know what? The, <laughs> the biggest uh, useless piece of information. The biggest single malt whisky seller in France? Aber lower 12. Yeah. There we go. It's uh, massive in the French market. But uh, again, it's interesting. We look at different expressions. Uh, we had the Glen Farkless 105 last week, yeah. which was sharing matured and really, really dark. This is really light. Um, that is. So there's no uh, there's no fake tan in this, is no that? Fake tan, no, no, no fake tan. Oh, it's just only 40% after. Oh, the Kerry Lila's 40 as well, isn't it? Just for yeah. the, Have that in your cornflakes. Uh, That's 43. 40. Oh, Christ, we've got, a weak, we've got a weak one there. Oh. Tell Tatty that Willie Bradford says hello. Willie Bradford. Ah, right, there you Billy, go. Glenn you... Lucy for uh, Brun there. And Billy Huntington's. Best drummer, apparently. Is that right? Uh, he's he tuning in every Saturday, That's does it. every Saturday night, and plays his uh, tube in a tube. All right. Well done. <laughs> so, yeah, it's great stuff to lay, and I've, I've watched it most Saturdays, so good, good to see him. Uh, yeah, the heritage. It's an age, as I repeat it many, many times, and I do believe it's a, a market employee, does mm -hmm. away with age statement. If a whiskey is maturing perfectly in a nice yeah. cask, they'll no wait till 15 years or 12 years, they'll take it out early, yeah, yeah. put a name on it, like heritage or whatever the case may be, uh, and, and sell it I'll be mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30 yeah, yeah. percent I you know, hope David Brun's not listening to that. Well, they'll say David Brun or, uh, <laughs> or Jim Grierson uh, there. He'll be able to they'll, brief us on these uh, things. They'll argue with that, but that's, that's, that's a personal belief I, I hasten to add. So we've got a really look at this. It's almost just more than mature, very, very pale. Ah. Uh, rolling the legs. Stephen says he was in the army with your pal. Stephen? Yeah, with Billy Bradford, I thought he was in yeah. the... I mean, I am oh, sure it was a cook or something like that. Uh, uh, there you go. Legs are pretty light. Oh, absolutely wow. brilliant. Again, you don't know where you know it's got to go on the left hand side of the flavour map. You don't know where it's got to go because we don't know if it is. Mm -hmm. It's PT, it's not going to be right up to the PT because Len Parkers really don't do any heavily PT twisties. No, no. We put a bit of smoke in some of them, but uh, on the nose, oh, it's very light, very yeah. delicate. The citrus, vanilla. I, you know, I, do I'm, like, I do like a Glen Farkless, I've got uh, to say, it's a nice... That reminds me of a mojito, oh! a wee bit of mint in that. I thought you meant a mosquito! <laughs> a mosquito. <laughs> no, a mojito! No, a wee, wee bit of mint there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very pleasant, very light, uh, delicate. Yeah, that's got sitting away down by your Glen Kinches, your Dalvinis. And next week's opener is the down there as well. Oh, It's an interesting one. I'll just play, discuss that before we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Really light, very fruity, citrus, orange, a wee bit of apples, vanilla, honey, uh, really nice. Honey, honey. Mint. On the palette, oh, medium finish. Again, polished wood. That's the first thing it hits you. There's mm -hmm. no fruit in that, it's, it, it's the oak, the, the, the wood, it's like a polished wood, like, you know, furniture, French polisher from there green apples oh <laughs> we're going mental green apples who's yeah. going to say green apples first i'm waiting for everyone green apples <laughs> a granny smith apple. a granny smith <laughs> that actually hits me right hit the spot take that wee take that yeah. wee second yeah i kind of get it on the nose though i can't right, okay. get it out of the nose but on the, on the, the finish of the palette three touch of water cheers tp thank you I didn't put much in this glass. Okay, vanilla. A bit more buttery. Mm. Butterscotch. You get butterscotch sweet. You get the apples coming through again. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the sharpness of the apples. What ones? It's, it's a Granny Smith apples. Oh, I thought no you were going to color. see the word there. Granny Smith apples. They're oh. all coming in thick and fast now. <laughs> green apples. Green apples. <laughs> you deliver to do that and see if I can get the green apples out of it. Yeah, it's actually very pleasant. I, I, I must confess, though, so, uh, I, because obviously I do like the 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 sherry matured. I do like a, a standard Glen Farkless. That is actually quite pleasant. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's very pleasant. But I do prefer the Glen Farkless 105. It's nothing to do with alcohol by volume. 
mm-hmm. but I, I do prefer, as I say, the darker, mm-hmm. the, 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 the toffee caramel mm-hmm. coming through rather than the, the citrus. So, yeah, very good choice, Graham. Is, uh, that, is that the director's jam? That's going to be the director's jam this week, folks. So remember, if he's at an early, for the first few, you can get a complimentary director's jam. You can also buy them as well. So it will be posted out with you for next week package, as well as the whiskies that we're going to have for next week. So be early, be sharp, get yourselves ordered, because we've only got so many folks, um, just because we're trying to get things a bit more slicker. Yeah. Um, but uh, are we going to spill the beans, or are we going to... Yeah, I think we've got to at least tell the, the, the first one, because the first one is actually one I used to do a lot of talking about in Glen Kinshay. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. at the Azure, and it's one of the flora and faunas. And, and speaking to a lot of people who say they don't like whiskies, and you particularly get the, the females who say they don't like whiskey. I hope that the Glen Lossy will change it. It's very light, very delicate. I, I think it's it's almost a reminiscent of a Malibu. It's pineapple, it's coconut mm-hmm. coming through, and I just think it is really... And it's one of the few whiskies I do prefer without water. So if you're not a whiskey drinker and your wife's looking for a wee present or whatever, treat your wife, get on next week for the Glen Lossy because I think it will convert mm-hmm. a lot of women. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, uh, it's uh, great. It's, it's uh, one that you uh, don't see in a yeah. lot of bars, a lot of uh, back bars. Behind it, we've got Ben Nevis, a uh, 10 year old. Yeah. Again, it's one I've never tasted. Uh, I've driven past it a thousand times I've, in I've some of the uh, Americans. Uh, so, having that, then we've got to finish off with uh, a wee bit heavier on the, the Isle of Biscay. We're mm-hmm. going to go to Lafroig uh, Quarter Cask, which mm-hmm. is a, a different expression. It's a bit sweeter than the standard Lafroig. So, hopefully, that's not as uh, antiseptic as the term I was always used. So that's next week, but we'll, we'll see you next week, hopefully. And so, technically, how many whiskies will uh, Michael have next week? He might have nine. <laughs> nine whiskies! <laughs> Michael, the party's at your house! <laughs> so, good shout, good yep. shout. Perfect. Well, I think now it's as you know, hopefully you have all enjoyed yourselves, folks. It's been informative. There's been some good stuff here. I've certainly enjoyed the whiskies today. Ah, enjoyed, I don't know about the I've company. Still but, uh, I've still got the flavours coming yeah, through, yeah. actually. It's, it, it's quite impressive. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed the whiskies. Yeah. That's it. So remember, folks, go into the website. You can order for next week. You can have them in front of you, and it'll be the same time. And of course, what's the date next week? 5th of June. 5th of June. Right, 5th of June. Excellent. So I think that's us, folks. Gregor. Okay. Neil, what are we going to say? Slange. Slange. 28. What's that? The first one. Greg are saying we're still live. We're still on. We've got a delay for some reason. And then again, what that means. (laughs) You'll need to wait to finish your glasses, Graham. (laughs) Thanks, Kenny.